Welcome back to Little Sniggers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey, here with Jamade Dalcalo. Hello, everyone. Jacob Furman Matera. Hey, hey. Danny Dubs, welcome back, everybody. We're just talking little little person business. <laughs> Jake, you're off sugar, too. I Well, not anymore. I, yeah, one one day. How'd it go? It was terrible. Yeah? I'm I am a party mode right now. Full sleepover mode, as I said to John. Would you suck down? Oh, boy, I sucked a lot of things down the last Sugar 25. dogs. A lot of sugar dogs. Sugar <laughs> burger. Yeah, no, I really went ham after the fact. Honey glazed ham, oh, baked, licking it. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just licking the wrappers of fucking anything <laughs> with sugar in it. That's tough, brother. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was tough, but I I did it. You stay off the substitutes too, or yeah? Yeah, yeah, no substitutes. Into those. Yeah. yeah, I mean today full throttle. Yeah, balls to the wall sugar, but yesterday no sugar. Damn, Jake, I'm proud of you, man. That's hard. Ah, uh, thanks. I don't know that I've gone a day without sugar in God knows how long. I can't imagine that I ever have. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna try to make it a mu- uh, like a weekly thing. Okay. Like just one, one day, day a week. Yeah, one day a week, and then if once I do that, maybe try two, and then, and then I'll get it. And then in forty fun. years, three days a week, no sugar. <laughs> hey guys, I lost thirty <laughs> pounds. <laughs> yeah, I gotta cut back on sugar, man. I'm going ballistic with it. Yeah, I mean, most of the sugar I assume my intake is through soda. So mm. <laughs> if I just cut that out. I'd probably be way better off, but... It's so good, man. Yeah. Our, our friends keep sending us this delicious cheer wine. It's so hard to lay off. Yeah, it is dangerous. Mm. I'll snort a line right now, Mike. If you That's like to... pussy in a can, brother. <laughs> yeah. If you want to pour it right in between my ta-tas, I will, <laughs> I will huff it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we don't You need some there. sugar, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please get some. Yeah. You're going to see me with a yeah. sugar bag next to me. <laughs> 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 Baking something? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, this is just a weak supply. <laughs> They're going to think it's like a man purse, but it's just a bag of sugar. John, how you doing with sugar? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing all right, I guess. I've never tried to kick it, but I got to have a soda when I'm when I'm eating a McDonald's meal. You know? I'm, I'm with you, brother. Yeah. Try to drink water with it, man. It's like... I had water with a fucking salad today. It's like trying to drink hot chocolate while you're fucking. <laughs> it's exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Well, this is our last our last episode of the year. Oh yeah. Oh man. We really had a nice year, man. We sure did. Look at us now. Off sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. Somehow fatter. <laughs> <laughs> But 2023, all three of us are going to be jacked. I'm down with that. I'll be jacked. Yeah, two, I would like to be jacked. Too. Two-thirds is a, a solid, you know, that's solid goal. You're going to get two-thirds jacked? Oh, two th- <laughs> <laughs> You're going you're gonna to edge? <laughs> I'm going to edge jacking. <laughs> uh, no, I'll get ripped. I'll be ripped by um, Memorial Day. All right, I'll take you up on that. Damn. Um, you said that I'll do five. the same. I'll tell you what. Oh, no, I said it in public. Fuck. How about... Whenever our Memorial Day episode is, we podcast shirtless. No. <laughs> Why that, not? That is not what ripped is to me. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, maybe Labor Day. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be sitting here shirtless in white jeans. <laughs> <laughs> like a Cuban getting married. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't burp all over yourself. <laughs> yeah, I must have watched that clip from last episode where I almost threw up all over the microphone about a hundred times because uh, that was the perfect embodiment of how my brain operates. <laughs> Desperately trying to think of a joke, nothing coming into my fucking mouth except vomit and burp. <laughs> I was like, oh. I'm just glad it wasn't <laughs> diarrhea. Probably would have been. <laughs> it, oh, Give me a little more time. <laughs> yeah, let's never wire your jaw shut. There's only one one funny hole left after that. <laughs> 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 All right, should I flip this motherfucker? Uh, you should because that was really mean. All right, let's go. <laughs> flip it. All right, and I hope it sticks in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> this would. Oh, I lost. I can, man. I, I have a feeling 2023 is going to be your year. I hope so. I think so, too. You're due for it. I'm going to get ripped, and I'm going to get a fucking yeah. Joker's episode. What if you got your Joker's episode, the episode that you perform shirtless? That would be horny for everybody. Oh, my God. Whoa. Those eyes? True TV, watch man. out. 
man. Oh, I got four nipples, though, so that's going to be an issue. You got two. <laughs> you got little fucking... <laughs> those are embryo nipples you got. Embryo nipples? I wouldn't that's even... fine. I'd rather have those than... That was your twin nipples. Four milkers, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I wouldn't even say I had four nipples if I had what you had. Well, I didn't say it until a doctor told me I did. He just didn't know what to say either. He's like me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was wiping spit off of off his chin when he said that. He <laughs> <laughs> had four nipples, right? <laughs> Trying to throw me off the fact that he couldn't think of something funny and just spit up instead. <laughs> you ever had a doctor say something funny to you? Um, that probably that's the funniest. Mm -hmm. Nothing, uh, nothing that changed my life and made me tell other people about my body. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Furman? Oh, man. I think there's a lot of defeat with doctors. That means, well, like, well, you're not going to do anything about it. Kind of <laughs> mentality. But that's about it. Yeah. Do they yeah. say that? I've had, like, one doctor say that. I was like, all right, I'm not coming back. Uh, they were like, you know, you could uh, you could afford to lose. A l They're like, well, you're not going to do that. So uh, try not to do that. I was like, all right, well, yeah, wow. that was it. So not, wait till, not funny. Wait till he sees you performing a podcast shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> you got a funny doctor? I had, yeah, well, one that went along with jokes. My dermatologist, Dr. Rhodes. I went there for the first time two years ago to have some skin tags frozen off. Okay. I love that you name every single person in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Just the sweetest, kindest man. And uh, I loved him so much from the first moment I saw him. I went in there and I had my shirt off. And he was about to freeze my skin tag, so I had my shirt off. And uh, I was like, what are you doing this weekend, Doc? He's like, oh, I'm actually going to see Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So when he's uh, getting the fucking apparatus ready to freeze my skin tags, I was like, I just thought of a little song for you. You want to hear it? He's like, yeah, why not? So he starts freezing my skin tags off. And I was like, I love Dr. Rhodes because he takes the time to freeze my skin tags, baby. <laughs> You did not sing. This. I did, and he started, my wife was. My wife will verify this. Why was your wife in the room with you? I don't trust this man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude! <laughs> oh, man. Did you not have like insurance? So you were trying to like sing him a song as baby? I did, <laughs> fully insured. I just had skin tags that needed removing, baby. A, a born performer. And he laughed. Did he sing? Did he? He did. He moved a little bit too. <laughs> did he take a lighter out? He started doing the guitar solo <laughs> with the with the apparatus. He torched Wham. my mouth with the freezing gun. Ooh, actually, that was I froze your nipple off. <laughs> That's right. I got three more. <laughs> uh, when was the last time you saw him? Two summers ago. I got to go back though because I got some odd freckles. Okay. Yeah, I should go back too. You want to go back at the same time? Back to back. Yeah. Back to back freckles. <laughs> <laughs> Back to back back freckles. <laughs> Dude, what if we matched our freckles up and it, and it spelled out like a treasure map? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> then we're going to Alaska, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We're doing the final Snickers episode of 2022. And yeah, we got Dandy tonight. Ooh. A Dandy? Brother, this motherfucker was a sexual demon. I'm talking about he had that pussy on a remote control. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about this motherfucker had pussy so wet that they had to get flood insurance in their bedrooms. Am, am I tonight's stinker? <laughs> Is it he? Is it me? <laughs> it's not Jake. Uh. It's another pussy demon. <laughs> 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 this motherfucker convinced multiple women that he was fucking to marry men for the purpose of setting them up for murder so that he could collect the life insurance policies. Whoa. The man dies. The, the, the new husband dies. Yeah. While this Lothario and so, his vixens collect the insurance money. This is an, uh, an upgraded level of pimping. That's crazy. It is. Yeah. Just a guy who has such control over the pussy that you might even dare say that they're pussy washed. Were they, so w would they marry them and have like, would, it, would they make it like inconspicuous or would they go a long time and get married? Some married for a short time, some just in a relationship. Okay. But either way, this coxman was pulling the strings. Imagine having that kind of control over the pussy, over multiple women. My God. 
Lothario Coxman. I love Yo. the way you describe this man. Y'all, y'all ready to see the sexual predator? Ty- you Ty- called him a dandy. I'm that yeah. I didn't call him a dandy. I thought you did. I called him a demon. Yeah, he's a sexual demon. Well, I heard back. I heard dandy in the beginning as well. There was dandy said. So right. it's not British. He turned in that no. honeymoon into a money moon. <laughs> <laughs> now, having the information that I provided to you, yeah. what? What person comes to mind when I when I mention all those words? Because of the dandy uh, implication, um, so I still have Jude Law in my head. Ooh, I have Tommy Pope in my head. That's who I thought of too when I yeah. thought of those words. Danny, can you move that bus and show these gentlemen Dr. Glennon Engelman? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no way, dude. Dog. <laughs> Is that a character? Is nope. that, that's, that's him. He was tearing the <laughs> pussy up so bad oh that he was able to convince these women to set men up to be murdered for their life insurance policies. God bless him. This What's motherfucker th- is the killer driller. He was a dentist. Ooh. Yeah, he looks like a dentist. Wow. But he does not look like he could be controlling the pussy like that. Brother, he was putting pussies in braces. Man, he's got pussies in that pocket protector. <laughs> for real, he does have a pocket protector. Is that his jail uniform? No, that's numbers? his court uniform. Oh, yeah, there are numbers on it. Yeah. What the, oh, what's maybe a, it is. That's a court, silk. What's a court uniform, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> a court uniform. Is, a is that his jail uniform? No, it's his numbered court uniform. <laughs> that's his away court uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the alternate silk jerseys that they have. Wow. What year is that picture from? Do you know? <sighs> 70s? Uh, yeah, I would guess so. Oh, my okay. God. Did he Man. just wake up? Is that just like one of those like unflattering <laughs> photos that? Yeah, you know, I haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, how girls take the selfies from up here and then they like do it from down here. Is that one of those optical illusions? If you hold it up, is he George Clooney? Yeah, let me see if I can right. understand where these are. So that's definitely a jail picture. So it's got to be around 1980. He's not that. <laughs> yeah, he's fucked. If he's up. wearing a hat. I could see maybe. Oh, could yeah. you imagine was- that? Laying on top of you, pumping in and out of you, and about to fill you with more oh. cum than you care to do with. Fill me with love. Uh, yeah, I can, I can picture that. He's You're not disgusting. the worst looking guy. All right, well, fuck him and then come back to me. It's not who I pictured, that's for sure. I know Damn. that's right. That's the pussy demon? It is. That did, is a pussy demon. Did the men whose uh, lives were lost, <laughs> did any of them ever see this man's face? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Yikes. And, and i got to imagine that the men were more handsome than he. I have to imagine the same as well. Did he commit the murders or did the wife commit the murders? He would commit them. So he would, like, break in, find the husbands, and then be like, say, ah. Yeah, he would use the women to, like, set the husbands up. Okay. The husbands were the significant others. Damn. All, right. All for the sake of getting insurance money. Well, I can't wait to learn about this mf <laughs> Tell me all about them. All right, before I do that, I just want to ask you guys one more question. Do you think your sexual prowess is great enough that you could convince a lady to set somebody up for murder so y'all could collect the insurance money? Do you have any pictures of the ladies he was betting? Because, there's, yeah. there's one. And only because I only chose one because she helped. Uh, she was the only one that went to jail for this, I believe. And where <laughs> would you rank her on a 1960s scale? Of Not too bad, man. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Although she shares a name with the boss that I had that I hated the most. (laughs) And I'm sure you're going to reveal that name right now. (laughs) (laughs) For some reason, you're going to let people know publicly that name. I fucking hate you, Barbara Boyle. (laughs) (laughs) Why would he do it? Because I got to give the lady's name out for for context. What makes him do it? I'm such an idiot. When John said ladies, he was betting. I was like, whoa, he's betting on ladies? (laughs) Yeah, I think I could I, I could probably get a two to do a lot of mm-hmm. stuff. <laughs> a lady who's never had sex? I believe you could do that for a week, dude. <laughs> Man, I have no uh I have no authority over any woman. Come on, Jake. There's gotta be <laughs> Oh no, close up shot of that. <laughs> <laughs> you could get a lady to do something bad. I don't know. Man. Do you really think he could? Jake? Yeah, I, I sure as hell think he could. I think what would happen is I would try to get a woman to do something terrible, and then she would roll reverse it, and I would end up doing something terrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? And apologize the whole time. 
Either way, you're going to have your dick out in a CVS. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Just tell him you were looking for a cashier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the fastest way to get a cashier. Yes. Rolling their butt naked. <laughs> you know how? Oh, ch- finally, yeah. somebody actually fucking works here. <laughs> <laughs> it would probably be one of those robots like Giant has that are always in the fucking way. I love those robots. I fucking hate them. Dude, I've never seen one in a grocery store. I would love to. No, I have no. seen one deliver uh, towels to a hotel room for me. I would like Ooh. that. These fucking giant grocery store robots are always in the fucking way. Uh, they're taller than you, too. Right? They're huge. Yeah, that's kind of off-putting. And they also will hit you. What are they doing? Stocking? They're supposed to, like, troubleshoot spills and, like, shit that may eventually lead to lawsuits. Okay. <laughs> but they're, so they're so making easy it to harder trip for over. somebody to get a fucking slip and fall these days. They are, but they're also setting up slip and falls because it's so easy to trip over these fucking things. There you go. It's not like they're talking to you as they're roaming the store. They're <laughs> sneaking up behind you. Yeah. Would you have to sue the robot and the store if that was the case? I'm sure they're subcontracted out so the store doesn't have to deal with it. Yeah, probably. Like a third party. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds right. I don't know. But is there a giant open after this? I'll go slip on it. (laughs) Get your dick stuck in it. Like, how the fuck? (laughs) Explain yourself. (laughs) Yeah. I swear, I'm just looking for paper towels. I don't know how my dick ended up in this robot. Yeah. Meanwhile, the robot's just throwing up coupons for bounty. <laughs> just like. <laughs> he was asking for input. <laughs> yeah, so this fucking Dennis pervert, Glennon Engelman. What a fucking name, man. That is a pervert name. You better have a massive dick named Glennon Engelman. I'm starting to think he did. I think so, too. Yeah, yeah. he must he, have. He's got. You could tell how he smells by looking at him, and you can also tell how big of a dick he has. He, he's got a chode. What? I believe he has a chode. You think he has a chode? I do. A little tuna can. A little tuna can. I don't know, man. I think he's got a little pinky in the brain. You know what I'm saying? No, Jake. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know what it means, but it sounded convincing. <laughs> no. I this, think... is, this is coming from somebody who's got a Taj T and Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Taj grew up. Yeah. Got, got that whole WB. <laughs> um, I'm a screaming TGIP. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's penis. <laughs> I'm not all burps, baby. <laughs> Man, I yeah, he look at him. You can't deny. Like he has to be having a giant knocker. It's yeah. like a. It's kind of like a Ron Jeremy situation. Okay. Like obviously, no woman in her right mind yeah. would ever <laughs> want to have sex with a man unless. Yeah, his, his his member was a, uh, but gigantic. Yeah, and also too, I think I think people were just dumber during this time period, and you have to think that maybe like they were just enamored with the fact that he was a dentist, which true, yeah, which is the kind of thing that moms would fawn over if they found out their daughter was dating one of them. That is a big score. You're set for life if you marry a dentist. Yeah, free retainers, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I remember the night I got my retainer. Yeah, you were the the night doctor. <laughs> <laughs> We have to take you to the night. What, what song did you sing the dentist, Mike? <laughs> uh, I remember crying behind the couch while my mom watched the movie Splash. Because that's, my retainer hurt so bad. Oh. Oh. And that's why your mouth hurts every time you jerk off to Daryl Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Is that what you're about to say? I wish your father made a splash all over your mother's <laughs> back instead of in her. That was really rude, and I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. You've said much worse things to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was the What was the retainer doing? Just on the top, or was it both chores? What do you think it was doing? <laughs> Did you have the double uh, situation? No, just on top, baby. Okay, I had two. I think I had to do one on the bottom, one on the top. Okay. It's called a twin block. I had to get my jaw. Ooh, it out. damn! You got Kanye, so I could, so my fucking face could look fat forever. Oh, <laughs> well, they did a good job. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That was better than the thing you had just. Said. I'm so sorry. I can't turn it off. <laughs> so fun seeing his face light up when you set him up. Like, well, it's a lot of area to cover, so it's easy to light that up. <laughs> I'm so, this is Jesus, John. I'm so sorry, man. Christ, man. John, I'm a fat man. <laughs> You're not. 
be mean. Come on, man. I can't. <laughs> Call me that. It'll make you feel worse if I don't be mean to you. This is a year-end celebration, and I demand that you be mean to me. <laughs> Say something mean about my titties, or else I'm not going forward with this presentation. Your titties look all right to me. Fuck. Harm's may. Harm's way. <laughs> We're like... <sighs> man, look. You got me all flustered over how good you look. <laughs> you're so handsome and in shape. Oh, my God. I love you. I love you, too. God, I feel like a successful, like, marriage mediator right now. <laughs> Letting you guys talk it out. And now, <laughs> let's do what we want with Jake's penis. Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> well, it's already out, so. <laughs> Alright, so this motherfucker, by all indications, had a normal childhood. No cat torture, no piss in the bed, no fires. Dude, but you, if you stared in, into enough mouths... Are you ignoring me, John? No, I was trying to uh, look up to the gods and see if I could figure out where he was born. I don't remember if you said that. Missouri. Missouri. Okay. St. Louis, man. Gotcha. Okay. You ever been to St. Louis, Jake? I have. Yeah. What's your in, in, interpretation of that? <laughs> my, my uh, it's, it's a nice place. A lot of crime. What? Nice place. A lot of crime. Nice Doesn't place. sound so nice to me, Jake. <laughs> Lot of, it's the gateway to the West, number oh, one. It's a gateway to fentanyl. Is that where you I, got chased by the homeless guy? No, that was Indianapolis. Uh, I'm a magnet far away. for homeless chasings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easy to I catch. I mean, yeah. you're going to be winded pretty yeah. soon, I think. Yeah. <laughs> they just, you know, they, 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 all I got to do is run out the clock. <laughs> so he was an average student. And after he graduated, he joined the U.S. Uh, Army Air Corps which I believe was a predecessor of the Air Force. Okay. Okay. I think the Air Corps ended in the 40s, and the Air Force began in the 40s. Like, after they dropped the bomb, then they had to, like, rebrand? <laughs> that's yeah, what I'm yeah. assuming. That would be pretty funny if that's what happened. That, you know what? We have to, hmm? yeah, we have to figure Let's that out. Let's just change one word. Yeah. See, see how that works. Yeah, we're not the Air Corps. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't do what they'd do. <laughs> yeah. You're still painting over the city. <laughs> yeah. Those guys are monsters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he utilized the GI Bill to go to school at Washington University in St. Louis and get a degree in dentistry. I had a friend that was interested in becoming a dentist once, and it was the most jarring thing I've ever heard a friend say. I did. I had a friend the, uh, the same way. Then Strange. He became thing. a teacher, and now he's a lawyer. So I don't know what the fuck that. It just needs to be in front of people. Events. What? That kind of person. They just want to be in front of people. Oh, yeah. Staring in the mouth of the law mm -hmm. or some fat bitch in your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see, what's that. let's see what's going on in that fat fucking mouth today. <laughs> Ooh, that is gross oh. in there. <laughs> when, when did you guys start going to like an adult dentist? Early or like at adult, like at 18? What do you mean by adult dentist? Where you get jacked off at the end? <laughs> <laughs> then with the, the one in door. Chinatown? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my dentist, uh, my mom and dad went to the same one as me. So he did. Okay. He had the kids' room with like the toy chest of okay. little yeah, trinkets yeah. that you could pick from. And then when you were getting set up by the um, nurse practitioner or whatever, dental yeah. hygienist, uh, and then mom or dad is in the other room. So they had like adults and kids being seen in mm -hmm. the same space. You too, Mike? Or. No, um, I remember my childhood dentist uh, pretty vividly, but as far as adult dentist, the one that I have now is very sweet. Okay. And I've been going to him for maybe, I don't know, maybe like six or seven years. Very sweet, man. Um, although this is kind of weird. You know how they put um, special glasses on you so the the light's not blinding? Mm -hmm. He, They're not like special uh, dentistry glasses. They're, just They're women's face. sunglasses that he puts on my face <laughs> to do what he has to do. What do they smell like? What do they smell like? I, I don't know. A reasonable question, Mike. Yeah, yeah. You really <laughs> made a face oh. on that. Man. I don't know, man. They smell like sunglasses. Mike, I feel like <laughs> you'll enjoy this. My dentist, my childhood dentist, his name was Dr. Slutsky. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty good. Is Polish cool. whore. <laughs> There was a guy in in, uh, in Delco named uh, Doctor Wank, and they used to have T-shirts that said "I got yanked by Wank." No, they didn't. Yeah. Who had T-shirts? 
is patience. How is he not the most famous dentist what? of all yeah. time? Yeah, I got yanked by a wank. I want one of those shirts. Yeah. Do they come in size, full size bed sheet? <laughs> yeah, better better than the yank. guy next door whose uh, t shirt said, I got wanked by yank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 1953 rolls around. around. <laughs> I got Dr. Dr. Wang on the mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> man. Nice fucking guy, man. So Dr. Engelman falls in love. Wait to hear this bitch's name. This bitch just sounds like she's got a dry pussy. Edna Ruth Ball. <laughs> Ball kind of horny. <laughs> Ruth not feeling it. Mm-hmm. Edna not feeling Edna it. Edna Ruth. Yeah. Edna Ruth. Come gargle my ball. <laughs> That's a Dr. Shoes book. <laughs> oh, no, what are you guys having a stare off for? <laughs> um, I was looking at Jake. I was trying to think of a uh, Tia Tamara and Taj Maori joke. <laughs> that, was, that would be Tamara. I was yeah. about to say meat so savory you would think he was eating at Lowry's. <laughs> I could have used for a burp on that one. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the deal. Although she does sound like a dry pussy having bitch, she was a scheming ass bitch. And I love a scheming ass bitch. Is this where it all started? The scheming? Yes. Ooh. So it was partially her. They, all, all these ladies were complicit in this, in this uh, mockery of normalcy. <laughs> Mockery of last episode of the year, folks. We're <laughs> taking a much needed vacation next week. <laughs> so, unfortunately, their marriage doesn't last very long. And uh, old Edna Ruth she gets remarried again to a gentleman by the name of James Bullock. Now, she's still porking Dr. Engelman on the side. And that's what I'm starting to think. And the wheels are starting to turn for Dr. Engelman. He's like, damn, I'm a dentist, but I could be making so much more money. Let me holler at this bitch, see if she can set up this motherfucker for a life insurance scam. That's exactly what she does. So this the the divorce was real. Yes, they yeah. Got divorced because they did not love each other. She got remarried in sincerity, then continued yeah. to fuck her ex husband. Yeah, for the and that's de- where the yeah. scheme came up. Yep, for the okay. dentistry. Yep, at that point, I think that's why. What to get her teeth yeah. checked on twice a year? Yeah, get some fillings and get filled in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, we having a seance right now. <laughs> Does it smell like my ass? No. <laughs> Something's wrong. <laughs> All right, so get this. In uh, 1958, they devise a scheme to murder this poor man. Eesh. So James Bullock is sitting in his car, and uh, old Dr. Engelman sneaks up on him and shoots him in the fucking head. Whoa. Whoa. And James Bullock is able to stagger out of the car toward the St. Louis the Art Museum, and he collapses out front of the Art Museum, and he dies. Now, old dry pussy ass having Edna Ruth Ball inherits $58,000. Jesus Christ. What did that guy do? I don't know. I think they just knew they were going to devise the scheme, so she just kept taking out more and more life insurance. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Oh, so all that money was life insurance? Yeah. Okay. It's all life insurance money. Damn. All right. It worked. It does. And there was not, he got never was implicated for the murder. I mean, not yet. For a while. You're right. Yeah. Damn. First murder, cold-blooded, shot somebody First in one. the fucking head. Yep. So out of that money, she takes 38000 and he gets twenty. What do you think he does with it? He invested in a lifelong dream. What do you think this dream is? Opening his own practice? Mm-mm. Or does he already have that now? No, he does. Like, he is a pillar of the community. He'll regularly, like, help people out. If you don't have okay. the money, he'll take care of you. So he's got a good reputation in the community. Mm-hmm. But he's got... 20k burning a hole in his little ass dentist pocket lifelong dream he joined the air force he wanted to buy an airplane nope fuck open a water park nope (laughs) genius it wasn't the water park no (laughs) I thought for sure he buys his own drag strip what's that mean it means fat ladies in makeup (laughs) that are really named George or having foot races (laughs) well that sounds like a drag drag (laughs) <laughs> drag racing how do you buy a drag strip though what does you, that mean you could buy the strip it means like the land that they use to have drag races gotcha okay not right. just fucking down the main street of town no not a bunch of Mrs. Doubtfire's running <laughs> alright 
Is it okay to, is it okay if a man does drag to see his own family, Mike? Honestly, I think Robin Williams was a big pussy for that. <laughs> really? You don't, yeah. You don't like Mrs. Doubtfire? Uh, listen, so, man. act one, you're finding a plot hole that you cannot suspend your disbelief for. Be a fucking man. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to your kids through a playground fence like a real man. <laughs> yeah, you bitch made for that one, Robin. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> if my wife ever took my kids from me, I would dress as Miss Gladys. And Mr. Doubtfire her as Miss Gladys. <laughs> <laughs> to oh, to see your kids or just to sabotage your wife? A little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, it's the only way laundry's getting done in that house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I hope you guys still don't watch us in bed together anymore. <laughs> we haven't, no. <laughs> So I feel comfortable saying this out loud. Like I, I was so mad because like my wife will just lose articles in my clothing when she's doing laundry. I don't know how it happens. It's like you're going from the bedroom to the basement. <laughs> and uh, I, I stopped letting my lady do my laundry a long. That's time the ago. point where I'm at. Yeah. And uh, I, I finally had to lay down the law and say no more laundry, lady. <laughs> Separate piles. Yeah. Yeah. What I wouldn't give to do your own laundry. I think you can do it, yeah. buddy. <laughs> if I do my own laundry, I'm I'm considered selfish. So I have to do every every piece of laundry. Oh my god! Well, I'm, there's too many tags to read. I'm reading my tags. I'll do the I'll do everybody else's laundry in a separate load, but my shit is first and alone. Speaking <laughs> of separate loads, how was your mom? <laughs> <laughs> Rinse, cycle, repeat. Well, her 98 year old aunt died today, so she's not oh, doing great. Right. Oh no! I'm so sorry. Wait, was that? How's the, that feel? That wasn't your. <laughs> <laughs> That you piece of fucking <laughs> shit. <laughs> was that the party you were at this weekend? No, that was my mom. Okay, okay. My How was my sister, mom? My mom's Ooh. sister died. She's great. She's 93 tomorrow. Oh. My mom's sister died. So she celebrated her birthday that her sister died. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then Christmas. Oh, my she, God. I'm sorry. <laughs> did, when it's fine. I just wanted to make you feel like shit momentarily. I hope it doesn't last. Oh, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you got a, another load joke on deck for my <laughs> dear old mommy. John, when, you, when your mom found out the news, was she like, my wish came true? <laughs> that was I'll ask her. I'm sorry. I'll Don't ask, ask her. her. I'm sorry. I'm going to ask her at out. the wake. I'm going to say, hey, <laughs> did you wish for this on your fucking birthday? <laughs> uh, my friend Jake thought you might have. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry for your loss. Um, thank you. I'm also sorry too. And if I could send flowers, let me know. In lieu of flowers, call Mike a fucking pussy. Pussy. <laughs> thank you, Jake. I can't wait until you have a death in the family, <laughs> <laughs> buddy. If there isn't a death in the family, I'm the death in the family. <laughs> Look around. If none of them are dying, <laughs> yeah. it's you, dude. It's me. <laughs> Let's make a pact right here. If any of us die while we're still making little sneakers, <laughs> we have to have one of those Puerto Rican funerals. Yes. Oh. Like on air, where we're just posed in our podcasting positions. <laughs> Bro, can we green screen me at the mall, and I'll have a Annie Ann's pretzel <laughs> in one hand and a banana <laughs> strawberry smoothie in the other? Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Oh, my God. And feel free to take sips of that smoothie. Uh, you know what? Wow. Jake, grab two straws so me and Mrs. Del Calo can both enjoy <laughs> And he's back. <laughs> Ain't no pussy like grief pussy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the dentist license plate, wasn't it? <laughs> Vanity plate, grief pussy. <laughs> starting to think that guy did it. <laughs> yeah, you do, you do get good pussy when you're nice at funerals. Yeah, if you're a nice young man, mm -hmm. take everybody's hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you getting pussy that night mm -hmm. Oh thank you so much for the Oh thank you Oh yes these tears are gonna get me some mm -hmm. pussy You know what else you could do too What You know how caskets have those bars on the side mm -hmm. You could grab the bar and look your wife Thrust your <laughs> hips toward the casket <laughs> Let her know what's coming after that funeral <laughs> I've seen you do little humps Just wait until my mom's in the grave <laughs> I've seen you do half inch humps too Yeah I do <laughs> You you're, got a good subtle hump. Thank you. You're gonna give me some practice with mm -hmm. your tiny penis. I never <laughs> <laughs> and practice makes perfect. Oh, that's why you. you have the perfect yeah. hand. Yeah. Subtle humps. That's the name <laughs> of my next book. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna give her the all bearer. 
I'm going to make you earn it. <laughs> yeah, I actually tried to impress my wife when her grandmom died. I tried <laughs> to carry the casket on my own. <laughs> It's not heavy. It's just awkward. <laughs> I got it. Get the door. <laughs> oh, Jake, you just unlocked a special memory for me. At the last school that I worked at, one of my favorite kids was a special needs kid. Um, his name is Keith, the coolest fucking kid in the world. He would always get in trouble because anytime he opened a door, he would kick it open. <laughs> That's a pool. <laughs> did, did, did he just grow up watching Twisted Sister videos? <laughs> like, that's how he thought it happened. Yeah, I miss that guy. You know, you know who doesn't miss that guy? The person they live with now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're moving on here. Yeah. So Dr. Engelman, he got a taste of blood and he got a taste of moolah. So he's at the drag strip, and he's got employees that work at the drag strip with him, which doesn't bode well for them. So this next gentleman, uh, this guy named Eric Fry, he's married to a lady named Sandy, which is never a good sign. You don't think Sandy's hot? Oh, I think it's hot, but I think it's the kind of bitch that'll kill you. Gotcha. It does seem like a... She carries a knife. I'm fine with that, but it does seem like the kind of lady that'll you know, get you shot on lover's lane. So they work in cahoots together, and they set up Eric Fry, Sandy's husband. Now, Eric is an employee at the drag strip. Now, Dr. fucking Engelman, he confronts Eric. Now, after Sandy's already taken out life insurance policies on Eric, Dr. Engelman's like, all right, I'm going to kill this motherfucker now. So he sneaks up on fucking Eric at the drag strip, and he hits him in the head with a rock. Did it work? Kind of. They're also fighting near a well, and the fight goes close enough to the edge of the well that Dr. Engelman is able to push Eric down into the well. So just a random person hit this guy and put him down the well. Is the story that's going to happen. Wait, it gets, it gets a little more exciting, too. Just to make sure the job's finished, what do you think Dr. Engelman does? He dumps the, the fry oil from the fryer down there? <laughs> <laughs> Is he pushing rocks over on him? He's not, no. He uh, fills it up with water? No. He lights a stick of dynamite and throws it down. Holy the <laughs> It was an accident. <laughs> it was, a, it was Jack, perfect. Jake, the death was ruled accidental. How? There's a fucking stick of dynamite it in It fell from the sky. It was God's dynamite. <laughs> Natural causes. Yeah. Now, after Dr. fucking Engelman gets arrested, he's talking about this killing. And they asked him where he got the dynamite from and, you know, how he knew what to do with it. He's like, I, he's like, I know my way around dynamite. The exact words he used were, I was under the tutelage of a powder monkey. Oh my Which in the service means it's somebody who's uh, like an explosive engineer. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking, Jake? I don't know what I was Tell thinking. Tell me. No, I... I know something's cooking in that racist brain oh, of yours. No, there's nothing here, buddy. <laughs> Nobody's home in this brain of mine. Put your hood up and sell us. <laughs> Man, did, did he get arrested for that one or later still? No, he still didn't get arrested. So, dude, okay, yeah, yeah. I need to, I need a map of the fucking drag strip. Yeah, where you can just be throwing dynamite down the well mm -hmm. around the corner, still on the premises. Like, how far away was he? And I don't know, man. How he had to, defensible? Was like, oh, Your Honor, that was my dynamite well. Like, my interpretation of this is that he could have been saying, like, all right, we're trying to destroy the well. It has serves no function on the drag strip. I didn't know he was uh, down there. You could have just, I don't know, he's down there fucking drinking or something. It's a tough sell. Yeah. And also, you know how a man likes to have a few beers down in the well. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're called well drinks. <laughs> awesome. yeah, that's Three dollar well drinks. That's how well drinks started. Yeah. So he's getting the money from this lady now. Mm -hmm. But what about the other lady? The, the other lady who gave like twenty, thirty thousand. Oh, brother, she's she took on. her money and did her own yeah, thing, right? She she went off and did her own thing. Wow! So they just leave. They do. And yet they did. Do you know if they ever boned again in the future? Probably. Okay. He's a coxman, so I mean, yeah, she wanted that. She came back <laughs> yeah. for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still waiting on a few that get got that, away to get that cavity filled. I've got the best penis. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I'm starting to think they're not going to realize it. <laughs> Are there better penises? 
I don't think so, John. <laughs> Thank you. I I really feel bad about making fun of your dead uh, me mama. <laughs> 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 Don't feel bad. You made some good jokes about it, and uh, feel bad after. John, okay. did she leave you any money? I would be surprised, um, but we'll see. We will see. Jake. Yes? We might be getting a pizza party. Ooh. She, I don't think she had any children, so. Oh, my God. Maybe Big a, maybe a, a great nephew that she saw probably less than two dozen times in her entire life, Aww. is going to be <laughs> coming up Yahtzee. Damn, that just made me think of that lyric from Tears in Heaven. Would you know my name if I saw you in heaven? Would she recognize you in heaven? Probably. She knew me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Would took, she took recognize me a while. you in heaven? I absolutely sincerely answered it. <laughs> 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 made me believe in heaven for a minute there. Yes. That was nice. You did something nice for me. Yeah. And you should not feel bad at all anymore. Thank you. I pictured myself in heaven. Uh, isn't that nice? It was I, nice. I put you there. You did. You put my ass in heaven. <laughs> John, are you wearing all white ACG in heaven? Yeah, baby. <laughs> Smothered in the blood from when Mike bludgeoned me in, into a well. Mm. You know Mrs. Del Calo would have to go through the pearly necklace gates. <laughs> oh. My lord. <laughs> Dude, you fucking pick him up just to fucking <laughs> knock him back down. <laughs> I should not have told him <laughs> not to feel bad anymore. Yes, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 1967. All right, he's divorced again. 1967, he falls in love once again and marries <laughs> yeah. a lady with another dry-ass pussy name by the name of Ruth Jolly. Whoa. Double Ruth. Ruth Jolly. She a bigger girl? It does sound like it, and it also sounds... She sounds like a prostitute that doesn't make a lot of money. Because she's probably fat. But what they might not realize is sometimes big chicks give the fat best. Fat girls make a lot of money. You think so? Well, I know they make it from me. <laughs> Onlyfans.com. <laughs> no, and I say this because I once went to show and tell the Gentleman's Club. and uh, Could, Didn't see a single gentleman in the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a bigger gal there who was dancing. And I could tell she was very self-conscious about her body because she was wearing a men's dress shirt. Oh, did she have the biggest tits of all time? No, regular ass tits. Just uh, <laughs> did kept... you know her? <laughs> I was thinking it might be Bubbles, the girl that gave me. Oh, my was that your great aunt? My. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm actually sad if she's dead. <laughs> yeah, '98. She her, her last shift at Show and Tell was two weeks ago. Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Hot seat accident. Yeah. <laughs> now that bitch is in Show and Hell. <laughs> No, we were just in heaven together. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, there was a uh, a plump lady who uh, and you felt guilty, so you you gave all your money to her. No, nah, brother, I wanted all that friction on me. Oh, you got the dance from her. Yeah, I did. Nice. Yeah. Back room, front room, front room, middle room, <laughs> attic, Fr- front room, but it smelled like the back room. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's gross. <laughs> that's gross. You've been in back rooms before, yeah. right? Yeah, once. <laughs> Just the one time? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, I went to a show and tell on an off night, and I didn't know that it wasn't the show bar night, but they do have the ladies like out in front of the room, so you could go into the rooms, and I had like 60, 70, or 80 bucks in my pocket. But, and I went in there, and the lady told, read through the menu, and I was like, all right, I can't afford any of that. She's like, well, how much money do you have? And I took it out and counted it in front of her, and it was all ones because I worked at a bingo hall, and that's how they paid us. And that's how I stole the money. (laughs) And uh, she's like, all right, for whatever it was, she's like, I'll stand over you while you jack off. And it was that's that's a good barter system. I thought it was good too. Off menu. It is, yeah. I'll get the uh, coconut shrimp, and you leave the room while I jerk myself off, please. (laughs) It was very awkward, though, because like I had never seen a pussy up close before. So she's standing right, like right here, and she's like slowly gyrating. She's yeah. like, "Do you see my clit?" I was like, "I have no idea what anything is." <laughs> Where's your penis? <laughs> I is- paid to see it. Was that had to be uh, a difficult thing? You had never had sex yet. You had never seen no. a pussy. <laughs> no, and it's right in front of you, but you can't fuck it. But you went back there thinking that maybe you would be able to fuck it. I didn't know. Like honestly, like I was a little nervous because I was with buddies. And I didn't want to seem like a weirdo for backing out. I wanted to see what was doing, but... And also, it was just too awkward. Like, I, I didn't... 
have like the chutzpah to just be like, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to go wait outside. Yeah. Yeah. I would feel like I was letting her down by not giving her all the money that I had. Well, well Mike, if it makes you feel better, I think every night at show and tell is an off night. So. Oh, that is really sweet of you, Jake. And I'm glad you said that to me. <laughs> I'm sure you left, left that place with a box of mozzarella sticks. <laughs> in a styrofoam container. Yeah, he was out of money. <laughs> is he because he paid eighty dollars in ones to <laughs> jerk off under a woman? <laughs> he goes under the hood. <laughs> you probably would have had a better come if you just jerked off in your car in the parking lot. Honestly, I agree. <laughs> I, dude, I will say this, man. This motherfucker, man. One of the guys that I went with, just somebody who I was fine with, who I guess was kind of a, a friend. He went in. He did what he did in one of the rooms too. And then it was maybe like a year later I met my wife. And then upon bringing my wife over to my mom's mom's house, this guy had come over to visit with my mother. It's not what you think. <laughs> and for some reason, this guy mentioned in front of my then girlfriend, my mother, and my sister that I paid the jack off in front of a prostitute. That's not something you should say. An insane thing to say. That sucks. There's no what? reason for it. Damn, I... What I don't know. What did you do in that moment? I, I wasn't there for I was in the kitchen eating. And then I was driving to my girlfriend's house, and she was weird. I was like, what are you being weird about? She's like, nothing. She's like, I'm just weird. She's like, it's nothing you did, but did this I? is what happened. She's like, yeah, this guy, Dan, said that you and him went to show and tell before, and you, you paid a hooker to jack off in front of her. Man, Dan needs to learn how to keep his fucking mouth shut. He's yeah. a real bitch. That's Fuck you, Dan. That's why I don't be jacking off in front of prostitutes anymore. That's yeah, you know, fool me once. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on Dan. Yeah, that's got to be tough, man. I, you know, what keeping a secret? No, <laughs> I'm talking about like visiting prostitutes on the download because there was a comedian. Seems like it would be very easy to do, dude. I don't know. The, these prostitutes are wild in these days. There's a guy that I'm not sure that you guys know, but he was a comedian. His father was beaten to death in a Center City motel room by a male hooker. A male hooker? Yep. Yeah, was her. How much know. did that cost? <laughs> <laughs> if you have to ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. <laughs> but yeah, that kind of shit happens. On top of that, too, like... A lot of these ladies turn out to be men, and imagine losing a fist fight in your own car to a male prostitute. <laughs> yeah, it never feels like your car again. <laughs> Honey, what if we trade this in and get a hybrid? <laughs> Man. That's kind of what you got beat up by. You got beat up? <laughs> um... Where the fuck were we? All right, so 1976 rolls around, mm -hmm. and Dr. Engelman, he's working his dentistry practice. You know how a man works his dentistry practice, Jake. Oh, I know. You worked a practice so long, it starts to feel like a game, baby. <laughs> Mike, you think the reason why he was so good with the ladies is because he was a dentist, and it's kind of like the, the mouth of the north mm. on a lady? The vagina of the north? It could be. And the vagina the is like the... The mouth of the South. He's probably like, all right, I want you to open wide and you're going to feel my fingers for a bit. <laughs> 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 Let me know if you need to use the bathroom. <laughs> and I will open my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> then after you come, you put a prize box on her chest. <laughs> Damn. Dude, I was like 19 years old going in the prize box. No, you weren't. Yes, dude. Legitimately. I what guess I must have been... If they if that guy didn't retire, I probably would have been like 18, 17 or 18 in the prize box. Yeah. Fuck. I, I just... Re I vividly remember like getting a cavity filled and then just like waiting. Like they had paperwork to be done. So I'm just like shooting free throws next to like a six-year-old. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like with a little fuzzy ball and I'm just like... Six right. foot one. Yeah, yeah. I'm like... <laughs> I was like, I think I should probably look into seeing an, like an adult dentist now. Mm -hmm. That was too much. And I still got a sticker. so It does feel good when you start going to the big boy dentist. It, you know, it feels cold. What? I didn't like it. I mean, leaving with, in your practice right is a little too still goes and <laughs> I, I, hate, yeah. I hated my childhood dentist, man. He was a lot. Yeah, you said you had vivid memories of him. Yeah, he had a, uh, 
a very distinct ethnic smell. And those aren't fingers you want in your mouth. To <laughs> Lord, they aren't. <clears throat> you know, I would, I would get little finger puppets. I would, every time, I had about 15, I had a lot of cavities. So I would just like wear them and be like, that was my good memory. You mm -hmm. would wear them and be like, <sighs> it was their own language. You were 19 doing that? Yeah, and then my name was on the board for the, the free throw record. You were 19 doing that? You were 19 <laughs> jerking off under a lady for $80. <laughs> Paying the jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. I was, and I was 19 with dreadlocks. Wow. Look how far we've all come. <laughs> Look how many times we've all come. <laughs> all right, Jake. So 1976 rolls around, and Dr. Engelman's dental assistant is a lady who sounds very lovely. A woman by the name of Carmen Miranda. That sounds hot. It does. First hot name of the whole damn episode. It is. No Ruths, no Edis, no Gertrudes. Yeah, Carmen Miranda. Too hot. Oh, too hot first names. Spicy. Spread them out, bitch. I'm yeah. talking about probably cooking pork chops in the middle of the night type spicy. Too high. Hurt your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, you need some sugar. <laughs> 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 All right, so... He's able to convince Carmen Miranda, who he is also fucking, to get married, to take out life insurance policies on this gentleman by the name of Peter Helm. Okay. He picked out the mark this time. He did. Hmm. Oh, wow. He sets him up. What did Peter do that he thought he could get a lot of life insurance money out of him? I don't know. That's a good question. I guess it always just depends on whatever plan the lady picks out, right? Yeah, and I think, especially, like, back during this time, scheming probably wasn't at the level that it is right now. True. It's probably much more difficult to get a life insurance policy than it, than it was back in the 1970s. And I feel like men were getting wifed up very easily, too. <laughs> like, they probably... He, these women probably dated these men for less than a year before mm -hmm. they were even yeah. married, right? Yeah, I feel like getting married was an accomplishment back then. You were married within a year of meeting the person, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah. The pussy was right, yeah. Was this guy rich, or was he just, like, a bad patient of his? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really nervous at the dentist. <laughs> He's like, all right, I found your mark. <laughs> this guy's fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah. But, brother, they devise a plan where... The plan is for, for fucking um, Carmen and Peter to go to Six Flags. Part of that, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. questions. All right. Uh, and what year? <clears throat> this was 1976. They had okay. Six Flags back then? There was a Six Flags Damn. back then. Holy shit. They're going to Six Flags, and the plan was for them to pull off at a certain park where Dr. Engelman would be waiting. And the excuse was going to be that, that Carmen wanted to see caves that were somewhere in this park. So they pull off, and they're walking towards the caves, and poor Peter is shot while they're walking. Does he know Glenn's there? He doesn't, but there's other people in the park. Oh, no. And they see Dr. Engelman walking toward her as Carmen's running away screaming. So they see the killer. Was he dressed as a dentist? Or, like, was he in normal clothes? Street clothes? <laughs> or was he on his lunch break? <laughs> and he said it was six flags at this time. It wasn't two flags. It was, like, all six were there. They were all united. Jake, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. This motherfucker is truly a madman. He is nuts. Fucking murdering people with a gun in broad daylight with witnesses. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty wild, man. Yes. For insurance money. So they collect on this. They collect $75,000 from Peter. Jesus Christ. And never, I mean, eventually arrested, yeah. obviously, but... Mm -hmm. Clear got got off scot free from this one as well. Initially, yeah, that was the even though he was seen. The total yeah. amount was seventy five. That yes. wasn't his. Okay, yeah, it's a lot for the treasure chest. <laughs> so now he's got wow Rolexes. Mm -hmm. He's got the drag income. He's got the dentistry income. Mm -hmm. Full time cum. job, part time job, mm -hmm. and he's still getting insurance money from people. This guy's got to be loaded at this point. Dentists he'd make balling, money, bro. dude. Yeah. I know he's balling, brother. Isn't this so funny? Dentists are the one that, like, they're the ones that go to Africa and kill zebras and lions and shit and just, like, why are you, like, it's not even a challenge. They're just yeah. paying to go fucking get an animal head. Yeah, and, and it's this, especially fucked up because, you know, a tusk ain't nothing but a big-ass tooth. 
And you're going to kill somebody just because you want their tusk? True. You're going to kill me because you like my teeth? You, you like, like my teeth? You want the biggest tooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's, in the office. Wow, you really That's beautiful. figured everything out. I did. What yeah. is it about dentists that make them want to kill? What well, don't they're, they? They're horny psychos. <laughs> don't, legitimately. <laughs> Who the, what normal person wants to put their hands in people's mouths? Don't they have, they legitimately, don't they have the highest suicide rate? They should. I think they do. Is that true? Yeah, I think they, yeah, I'm pretty sure Dennis has it, the... It's Dennis and anyone who's fucked John. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, he's yeah. turned his sights back I'm on sure. me again. Dan, look it up. I'm, I swear to God, because I think most of them have the practices in their house and like after like a long, miserable day, they just sit in the chair and drill themselves in the head. Just take Jeez, themselves out. Uh, right. Dennis are number two. Number two. What's number one? Wait, let me guess. Um, Podcaster. <laughs> Um, <laughs> pilots, medical doctors. Ah, uh, whoa, Jesus! But I feel like that's that's like uh, like they got caught, they got got, they killed somebody by and accident and on purpose or by accident. Oh, you know, or prescribing too much, people's catching on. Why are you talking like this, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You know how motherfuckers be prescribing too much. It's it's the sugar. <laughs> A lot of times they over prescribe and they can't adequately describe. <laughs> adequately. <laughs> adequately. Then they have to go to court and talk to a scribe. <laughs> yeah, that happens sometimes, Jake. Yeah. Sure does. Yeah, dentists are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> You'd make a good career counselor. <laughs> I have that sign in your office. <laughs> <laughs> Anti-dentist signs everywhere. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dentist free America. <laughs> yeah. Was it wasn't that curve episode anti-dentite? <laughs> yeah. I think it was Seinfeld. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. That feels good. I know it does. Let's do it more. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, you wanna put yours over here too? Uh, oh god. Oh look at oh man. All right, so get this. So he starts fucking with this bitch named Barbara, okay. who's a real scheming ass bitch. What's her last name? I don't want to say it again. I already said it once. Mm. It's the last name of a boss that I hate, and oh. I already regret saying it once, so I'm not going to say it again. Oh, uh, they yeah. didn't have the same full name. It was just the last name. No, it was... It was the... F oh, no, Mike! Yeah, brother, it was everything. Yeah, how's it? I stand on my words. Well, I'll say it a couple times before this episode's over, that's for sure. <laughs> Somebody will put it in the comments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I stand on my words like a first-place podium. Does she have Instagram? I'm going to tag her in this clip. No, I don't think she's smart enough <laughs> to use the internet. That. Do not do that, anybody. <laughs> yeah, this lady was a real nightmare of a human being. Well, hopefully she gets thrown down a well and then exploded with dynamite. <laughs> that's, her, that's her death. So he's porking this bitch named Barbara, and she's yet another scheming-ass bitch. Damn. She starts telling Dr. Engelman about her boyfriend, which is this gentleman named Ron Goosewell. <laughs> That's horny. Mm hmm This is the 70s, baby. <laughs> Everybody's got a horny name. It's a free love name. Mm hmm Then they start fucking around with a bitch named Heather Featherberry. It's like... <laughs> you made that up? I did. That's a 70s name. Did you like it? Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. I believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so she starts telling him about her boyfriend, Ron Goosewell, about how he's got money, but more importantly, how his parents have a lot to leave Ron. So he's like, all right, so we might have to step our game up here. On top of that, too, he involves another person Ooh. in this scheme, in this multi-murder scheme. This is, the, this is the mess up. Yeah, too many people. Another horny name. The accomplice is named Robert Handy. <laughs> <laughs> Handy Goosewell. Mm-hmm. He can. <laughs> so initially, the plan is, and they implement this plan, it's to kill uh, Mr. and Mrs. Goosewell, Arthur and Vernita. Not horny names. You ever fuck a Vernita, John? Mm-mm. Jake, do you know what a Vernita is? <laughs> it's a kind of woman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a taco. It's one that makes a mean stew but only gives you pussy once a year. Vernita. Mm-hmm. It's Spanish for unfuckable. <laughs> I don't think that it Wait, is. Wait, so she's not withholding the gine. She, it's just, you don't want to partake. Brother, you I'm- You just want the I, stew. You're there for the stew. 
I, I would. I, I'm so devoid of home cooked meals that I would trade ten years off of my life for some <laughs> fucking stew. So it's just the stew. You're in the relationship just for the stew oh, at this yeah. point. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's it's like essentially loveless, but you love the stew, so you stick around. I got it. I've, <coughs> I haven't really been in one of those relationships, but I love stew. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a stew that good. Yeah, you might. stew so good you only want to fuck once a year. Mm. <laughs> mm. What kind, of, what kind of stew is that? A pussy's kind of body stew, you know? Ooh. You got all kinds of chunky parts and juices. <laughs> that was the worst way of describing <laughs> pussy. Mike? Guess I'm not going to eat any pussy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Just push it yes. away from my face. No thanks, I'm full. <laughs> Just flicking the pussy off to the dog. Mmm. <laughs> Putting it in a napkin. <laughs> 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 Did you put my pussy in the trash last night? <laughs> what? I found it in uh -oh. a fucking paper towel. No. Oh, <laughs> oh I probably shit it into the toilet, <laughs> forgot to flush, and then the dog dug it out, <laughs> brought it downstairs to the trash because he's smart and he knows where those things go, <laughs> and he put it in there. That's what you I remember was. that class we took our dog to, right? You remember? He yeah, he learned some things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sexual obedience class. <laughs> sexual obedience. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the plan is to kill Mr. and Mrs. Goosewell. They do it. So Dr. Engelman shows up to their house and he shoots both of them. House call. <laughs> Inappropriate. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. No, that was very funny though. Here's my rule. If the victims are uh <laughs> Awake and outside? <laughs> no. If the victim's families are probably dead at this point, too, then I think we can make oh, funny jokes. Okay. I don't know. Maybe. If you are a goosewell who is personally affected by this podcast episode, please. We're so sorry. We will issue Yeah, we apology. are sorry. Uh, we We're right at the borderline because 1977 wasn't too far back. It's a very inappropriate joke that Jake made in case any goosewells are listening. <laughs> sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Goosewell of the future. That joke was not good for the gander, Jake. <laughs> 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 All right, so not long after that, so Mr. and Mrs. Goosewell were killed in 1977. In 1979, they devised a plan to kill Ron Goosewell. So check this shit out. Man, how many Ron was down with his parents getting killed? He wasn't. He did not know of okay. it. Okay. So he inherits close to $600,000 from his parents. Oh, Jesus shit. Christ. It was like a double jeopardy or double agent kind of thing with Ron. Mm -hmm. I'm so slow on this. No, Ron is not in cahoots with them. Oh, he's not. So the okay. plan was to get him to inherit the money. He has no idea what's oh, happening. Oh, shit. No, so he just thinks his fucking parents got murdered like fucking Batmans? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is sad, dude. He's making a latex suit. Yeah, why do you pluralize Batman like a fucking Hispanic dude? <laughs> I'm sorry, Batman. <laughs> I don't take it for Batmans. <laughs> dude, that is a bummer. This is some pizza under this jacket. What? He's sneaking an entire pizza into the movie theater, <laughs> and he's being called out for sneaking a pizza under his jacket. Mike, which way is he carrying the pizza? <laughs> yeah, I was going like to say. Horizontally, or is he doing it vertically and letting the cheese slide Did down? Did he fuck up the whole pie? It's a calzone now. Oblong, mijo. Oblong, mijo. I, is that? I think he said oblong, son. Oblong, my son. Oblong. Yeah. Is that what you said? I did. Was that his name? God, I'm so fucking glad this is the last podcast of the year. <laughs> but Jake, get this, man. So now the plan is in action to kill Ron because in addition to his parents' 600K, uh -huh. his, his bitch Barbara has a $190,000 life insurance policy on his name. Putting it all on black. Sorry, it's the sugar. I swear to God. Okay. Oh. So Barbara is now ready to kill Ron. She is. Yeah. So Barbara and Dr. Engelman are devising a plan. Now, Dr. Engelman's plan is for the murder to occur on a weekend where Barbara's kids go to her ex-husband's house. All right? The plan is for once those kids are out of the house, Dr. Engelman's going to sneak into the house. He's going to shoot Ron, kill him, then tie Barbara up to the bed and have her shit and piss herself as though she was held captive there all weekend. Is this in writing anywhere? It is. is. What? To shit... And you and babe, look, Barbara. I know you're gonna be tied up for a while, but you gotta shit and piss yourself, or they're gonna think you did it. John, that's the thing. She didn't go along with this plan because she felt as though the shitting and pissing herself was beneath her. She didn't have to go, I, right? Yeah. 
Now, they did wait for the kids to leave, but then Dr. Engelman just snuck in and shot him. Man, this guy really was jumping the gun a lot of times. He did. He shot Ron in his own house, and then he takes the body elsewhere. Well, wait, you said the kids are still there? No, the kids had left for the weekend. They went with their dad. Okay. So now he's disposed of the body. However, there's a fucking... He killed them at their fucking house. Yeah. He disposes of the body. So Barbara and uh, Dr. Engelman split this $790,000. Yeah. Man. That is so much fucking money. I know, dude. Today. I know. Let alone 50 years ago. I know, baby. <laughs> you know how many prostitutes I could jack off in front of with that kind of money? <laughs> I know. I try, <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner, dinner for the rest of your goddamn life. <laughs> you'll be eating. You'll be eating your own cum, dripping off a stranger's tits. <laughs> but don't touch her. <laughs> don't you dare touch her. Did you get to spray on her, or did you have to wear a condom? No, I, I jacked off all over myself like a goddamn lab monkey. I wish I had not asked you that. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you ask him? Jake will tell you it's gross there. Uh, where? Where? Show and tell. Back room. Oh yeah. That's actually like they're set up like doctor's rooms. It's like a, an exam table with a uh, the paper sheet over it. Is it really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ew. They check your weight when you. <laughs> when <they're> ah. right. <laughs> what is this? Yeah. We charge by the ounce here. So. <laughs> they check your penis growth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're putting a little light in your your dick hole. Just. <laughs> All right. Looks like you're in the thirteenth percentile. So we're gonna have you eat a little bit of creatine. <laughs> you pour it directly into your dick hole. <laughs> So that was 1979 where Ron Goosewell was killed. 1980, he's got beef with a lady who owns a dental lab that makes dentures. This lady named Sophie Barrera. They've got beef because Sophie sues him for $14,500 in unpaid services. Just give it to her and let it be done. Do not make a public thing about this. You've gotten away with four murders. Mm -hmm. Five murders now. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) He's like, I'm, t- I'm going mm-hmm. to court, and I'm it making is. a stink. Yep. Actually, th- this will be six. So it was the guy at the art museum, the guy at the caves, and then the guy at the fucking uh, drag strip, and then the three goose wells. So that's six people that he's killed so far. Damn. Wow. So he wants to kill Sophie Barrera. First, he tries to blow her up, and he leaves a bag of bombs against her back door. However... The night that he leaves the bag of bombs against the back door, it rains and it ruins the bombs. Oh no! I hate. Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> oh, dude! My fucking, bag of bombs. My bag of bombs got wet when it wasn't supposed to. Where are my bag of bombs? <laughs> hey, Joey, bag of bombs. How you been, huh? <laughs> Keeping your nose clean. I know that nose ain't clean. I know better than the dirt. I look at you, you, you fat pig. <laughs> <laughs> well, he looked me right in the eyes uh, when he said "fat damn. pig." <laughs> That's my stand-up nickname. <laughs> Joey Bag of Bombs. The fat, fat pig. pig. <laughs> um, so did he get to the bomb bag in time before she discovered it in the morning? No. So she knows she's... Somebody has it out for her. Could you imagine how surprised you would be? I mean, maybe you are in a legal battle, but mm-hmm. for it to be a bag of bombs a on your back... Bag of bombs. <laughs> Man. This guy's really coming for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess you got to brace for anything in that situation. Eventually, he does bomb this poor woman. Oh. He puts a bomb inside of her car, and it blows her body in half. Jesus Christ, man. How have I never heard of this guy? I don't know, but Jake. This is insane. Jake, if you had to get a half of your body blown, which would it be? Oh, definitely the bottom half. Mm Mm-hmm. Why is that? Because it's built like a Disney character. What the fuck are you talking about? Like a Donald Duck. You know, like a... Like a, like a chipmunk mm-hmm. in a suit. Keep going. I want that. I want that half removed, and then I'll just be like an Ursula. Mm. I'll go from full chipmunk to Ursula, because I look, I look like an Ursula. <laughs> I could pass for Ursula. Mm-hmm. So, I would go bottom half gone. Bye bye. Okay. Full Ursula. Body paint and everything. Okay. <laughs> would you guys apply the body paint for me? Mm-hmm. I'll shoot it at you. If you still came in here every day. Hey, ball gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot to add this. When he killed Ron Goosewell, not only did he shoot him, but he also bludgeoned him. After Oof. the gunshot? It was after the gunshot. I don't he know if he was already dead. Right, yeah. 
Yeah. So this, this guy's is truly evil. Like, so, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't a real, throw him in a well. Yeah, a real piece of work. And then for the next guy, we're going to take him to a horse corral, and we're going <laughs> to tie his arms and legs to four horses, and we're going to draw and quarter him. And that way, the cops won't know it was me. Mm-hmm. This guy is fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Blowing up multiple people. Yeah. Weirdest part about all his victims, though? Clean teeth. <laughs> Not a single cavity in the goose. <laughs> he was actually the inspiration for a 1996 movie called The Dentist. Do you remember that with Corbin Burnson? No. Yeah, he played an evil dentist. I think there were a few of them. A few uh, movies? Huh. Yeah, a few dentist sequels. Whoa. Did the guy blow up people in the movie? I don't remember. Holy but God. I remember in the movie, God. Corbin Burnson's wife was cheating on him, and that kind of sets his psychosis in motion. Uh, All right, so not exactly a true story. <clears throat> It could happen. Well, yeah. it's not as cool. It's that scene. looks like he's not as cool of a guy as he is. So you think he's justified? In... <laughs> no, I think if you're getting cocked and then you turn to murder. It's not that bad. No, I think that's like you're a pussy. But if you're just crazy and you're trying to get life insurance money, that's kind of um, you're more of a badass Little psycho. True. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did it all for the dollars. These other guys are like killer purists. <laughs> He just wanted the, the quiche. Right. But shooting people in the head, pretty uh, pretty evil. It is. Yeah. Shouldn't do it, Jake. Jake, don't do it. So ultimately, the bombing is what does him in. And in 1980, he's arrested for the murders of Peter Holm and Sophie Barrera. Were those two names we'd heard before? <laughs> <laughs> Sophie was the dentist. Uh, the blowed up lady. The blowed up lady. Okay. And then Peter was... The cave guy. The cave guy. But he admitted to the rest in... Um, he either admitted to or was found guilty of five murders. Hmm. So it was the uh, fucking Goosewells in Illinois, and then Sophie and Peter in uh, Missouri. So technically he wasn't charged with two, right? Right, yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, in March of 1999, he passed away, Jake. Oh, no. Yeah, died of a broken heart. (laughs) I always forget that's how you end the podcast. It gets me every time. Brace yourself, John. (laughs) Don't tell me. He died of a broken heart. He died of a broken heart. It was actually diabetes. <laughs> he died of a broken foot. <laughs> he died of sugar foot. No, How fucked no. up is it that you die five five months before Woodstock '99? <laughs> yeah, he was really looking forward to it. He was old as fuck, right? That's he was almost crazy. Seventy-five. Yeah. Um, I'm sitting here thinking, like, seventy-one. When you said broken heart, I was like. Is that when Invisalign came out? And he's mm. just like, oh, no. Damn. Did, uh, why wasn't he up for death penalty? I don't know if they had it. Huh. Yeah. Man, that guy's a fucking cowboy. Holy shit. He's like you. He was a dentist. I view you as a cowboy, too. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd probably do my murder in a cave mm-hmm. next to those Six Flags. That's where it seems right. Mm-hmm. Where would you murder? What Six Flags location would you murder people at, Jake? Hamilton. <laughs> Is that the Six Flags Great Adventure? Yeah, it's it's someone, Jersey. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Just closest. It's, just for proximity. Proximity purposes, yeah. That's probably going to work to your detriment in the investigation, honestly. <laughs> no, I'm to go a little bit further. I would plan it. I'd have like a, oh, look, he's in Delaware in the morning, and then he's in Secaucus. Oh, no, wait, that would be the other you way. You would pass the murder location. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> Did you know that John's mother is the mayor of Secaucus? Did you know that? I did not. <laughs> did you fucking know that? Oh, man. <laughs> Started hitting Dude. him. Closer. Dude, one time on NJ Transit, some French guy got really mad at me because mm. he was looking for that exit, but he came up to me and I like had headphones on. He's like, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, he says, Z-Coquis. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I don't speak French. And he was like, I was like, what's this problem? And then like speaking New Jersey. Yeah, and then two stops later, he's like, Secaucus. I'm like, oh, shit, that's... And I look, I'm like, yeah, yeah. This is it. This yeah. is where you're supposed to give me a head. Just, <laughs> he's just shaking his head at me. Just, 
like pure like ju- like the full judgment of a French person also goes into why I don't like French people. Yep. And look at them. They lost the World Series. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Again. <laughs> they did lose the World Series. <laughs> yeah, well, boys, that was fun. That was fun. That was... um. You warned us at the beginning that this motherfucker was wild. Yeah, he was a little devious little bastard. Jesus Christ, yeah. man. A little devious dentist. <laughs> Blew a lady up in her car over $14,000. He was almost a millionaire. Mm-hmm. Greed. Yeah, it truly is. Greedy motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Damn. What amount would you blow somebody up over? <laughs> <laughs> they owe me? Or if I, if I kill them, I can get that money? I, would, I, feel like I can kill a lot of people and get money. How mm-hmm. would I do it? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it would be some kind of um, some kind of outdoor accident. Oh, yeah. What about you, man? Dude? There's already one in my. As soon as you asked, I have one locked and loaded. Let's hear it for Pro that, bono. That's troubling. Pro Go bono. On. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's the ice cream man. <laughs> He's like, you had enough. Um, <laughs> You ever get turned away from an ice cream truck? It's no. How much, how, much, it's very, uh, how much money do you think is inside of that thing? Yeah. Oh, man. I, my whole life savings gone in an instant. <laughs> um, yeah. No, there was there's somebody I'd do just for like the, the you know, just to knock it off the list. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you for me. Yeah. But I mean, mostly I would say for an, another person, probably a hundred grand. That's a nice amount. Yeah. Wait. I don't think I answered the right question. <laughs> <laughs> I said how I would do it. Yeah, you did. The yeah. amount of money that I would need? <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess that's pro bono. I guess it's for nothing. <laughs> 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 what about how would you murder a person? Oh, and how much would you do it for? Brother, I don't harbor any hate in my heart. That's fucked up. He just set us both up to tell how yeah. to murder somebody in the amount of it would take. Kinda Neither do up. I. <laughs> yeah, you should feel terrible about yourself. <laughs> I love everybody. I want everybody to do well in life. Hey, what was that boss's name you were talking about earlier? That fucking cunt wolf <laughs> Barb. <laughs> who should have her feet cut off and drugged by horses. So you wouldn't say for like a, a back pay, take her out? Nah, I think I, I'd I'd want life to take care of her, and it kind of is. That's not exactly <laughs> what you were preaching just a moment ago. <laughs> I don't harbor any hate in my heart because life's taking care of her for me. <laughs> Boys, thanks for the lesson, Mike. Yeah, thanks Mike. for teaching me, as always. Thank you. I've learned so much tonight. Jamade, Furman, <laughs> Danny Dubs, all of you out there. Thank you so much for supporting us. This has been a hell of a year, and I appreciate all you guys. Thank you for all you do for us, especially those of you that support us on Patreon. Um, yeah, it means the world to us that we get to do this dumb shit all because of you. So thank you for making that happen. I love nothing more than to sit back, talk, come, and murder, and uh, Mrs. Del Calo's <laughs> with my boys. Uh, not the way I wanted to end the year. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you all Happy for... Happy holidays to everybody else out there. Thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to discuss her. But I wish you all the best, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. I'll tell you, you what, guys. in the new year, Mike's mom might be making a little appearance. No. So uh, I think some revenge is in order for 2023. No. We'll see. Ooh. All right, I might have to kill her just so he can not do that. <laughs> so I take that back. I do have some hatred in my heart for my mother right now. <laughs> all right, I love you guys. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.